President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi addresses the 33rd Arab Summit in Bahrain. President Assisi holds talks with the Arab leaders on the sidelines of the Arab summit. And Israel says more troops to enter Rafah as the operations intensify. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi addressed the 33rd Arab Summit, which concluded its activities in Manama, Bahrain. The summit, which was dominated by the Israeli war on the Gaza Strip, was attended by the heads of the state and the governments who condemned the Israeli brutal war on the besieged Strip. The details. Addressing the 33rd Arab Summit in Manama, Bahrain, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi reiterated that the summit was being held in a critical moment and historical circumstances in which the Middle East region was going through. President al-Sisi said such moment ranges from complex challenges and crises in many Arab countries to the brutal Israeli war against Palestinian people. The head of state further reiterated that this defining moment was imposed on all concerned parties and that it was the choice between two paths, the path of peace, stability and hope, or the path of chaos and destruction, which was promoted by the continuing military escalation in the Gaza Strip. President Sisi noted that history would pose for a long time on the tour to record a great tragedy of intensification of killing, revenge and siege of entire people. This in addition to starvation, terrorism and the forced displacement of Palestinians amid regrettable inability of the international community with all its active forces and institutions. The head of state stressed that the children of Gaza who were killed, orphaned, the rights would remain a drawn sword over the conscience of humanity until justice was enforced through the relevant mechanisms of the international law. President Sisi said that while Egypt engages with brotherly countries in serious and desperate attempts to save the region from falling into chaos and destruction, there was no real international or political will to end the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories and address the roots of the conflict through a two-state solution. He reiterated that Egypt would maintain its firm position of rejecting trials to liquidate the Palestinian cause as well as a forced displacement of Palestinians and making life impossible in the Gaza Strip with the aim of evacuating the land of Palestine of its people. President Sisi confirmed that it was delusional to imagine that security and military solutions were capable of securing interests or achieving security. The president noted that the fate of the region and the capabilities of its peoples were too important for the advocates of war. According to the head of state, Egypt paid heavy prices for the sake of peace and hoped to save the Middle East region from wars and bloodshed. President Sisi called on the international community and all active and concerned parties to prioritize future generations' interests in living in a peaceful and secured world where justice and hope prevail in future. Upon his arrival, President Sisi was received by Bahrain's King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. President Sisi's participation in the summit comes within the framework of Egypt's keenness to cooperate with Arab countries and unify Arab stances amid challenges facing the region. The Manama summit tackled the Israeli war against the Gaza Strip and ways to contain the escalating situation and attain stability there. The summit also centers on a number of regional issues. During his stay in Bahrain, President Sisi held meetings with a number of Arab leaders to discuss means to enhance cooperation and common coordination mechanisms. On the sidelines of the 33rd Arab Summit in Bahrain, President Assisi held talks with the Djibouti President Ismail Omar Gila. Presidential spokesman Ahmed Fahmi said that the two leaders stressed the deep relations binding the two nations and their keenness to enhance the cooperation in various domains and reflect the joint interests at the economic, commercial and the investment levels. Fahmi said that the meeting tackled the current situation in the region with the two sides stressing the significance of preserving the security and stability in the Horn of Africa region. 
President Assisi hailed the role played by Djibouti in the region and its position seeking peace and stability in the Horn of Africa. The two sides further reviewed the situation in the Red Sea region, with President Assisi stressing the Egyptian fixed stance regarding the end of the Israeli war on Gaza being the main cause of broadening instability in the whole strip. In this respect, the two sides confirmed the importance of regaining stability in Bab el Mandeb Strait and coordinating efforts of the Red Sea countries to achieve stability. Also on the sidelines of the 33rd Arab Summit in Bahrain, President Assisi met with the Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. Presidential spokesman Ahmed Fahmi said that President Assisi expressed Egypt's full support to the Palestinian leadership in facing pressures it was exposed to. The President further expressed the Egyptian appreciation for the efforts exerted by the Palestinian National Authority to push forward the international community in order to shoulder its responsibility in confronting the Israeli aggression on Gaza. The head of state also stressed that the Egyptian rejection of the Israeli war on the Gaza Strip, which has aggravated the negative repercussions due to the military operations in Rafah. President Assisi reviewed the Egyptian intensifying efforts to form a serious international position regarding the Israeli procedures as well as the country's measures to stop the Israeli war on Gaza and de-escalate the humanitarian situation inside the Strip as well as reaching sufficient humanitarian aid there to save its people. The President called for a just and a comprehensive solution for the Palestinian cause through holding an independent Palestinian state with uh, Jerusalem as its capital in accordance with the 4th of June of 1967 lines. On uh, the sidelines of the 33rd Arab Summit in Bahrain, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi met with the Jordanian monarch King Abdullah II bin Hussein. Presidential spokesman Ahmed Fahmi said that the meeting tackled the means to enhance the cooperation between the two countries in accordance with the aspirations of their peoples towards stability and development. The spokesman added that the meeting discussed the situation in the Gaza Strip and the catastrophic circumstances faced by its residents. Meanwhile, President Assisi met with the Iraqi counterpart Abdul Latif Rashid on the sidelines of the Arab summit. Presidential spokesman Ahmed Fahmi said that the two presidents affirmed that there is satisfaction with the level of relations between the two countries and the developments that they have witnessed in recent years, whether at the bilateral or the tripartite level between Egypt, Jordan and Iraq. President Assisi was keen to confirm the Egyptian support for stabilizing the situation in Iraq and preserving the unity of its territory, especially in its efforts to combat terrorism. The two leaders stressed the importance of joint coordination to enhance stability in the region. President Assisi met with the head of the Yemeni Presidential Leadership Council, Dr. Rashad al alaimi on the sidelines of the Arab summit in Bahrain. The president stressed the Egyptian firm stance towards the unity and the stability of Yemen. President Assisi also reiterated the Egyptian full support to all the regional and the international efforts that targeted a political solution to the Yemeni crisis. Both sides stressed the importance of intensifying efforts to resolve the Gaza crisis, which affects the situation in the Red Sea. The final communique of the Arab League summit hosted by Bahrain called for holding an international peace conference which brings into focus the necessity of the establishment and the recognition of a Palestinian state. The communique urged lifting a siege imposed on Gaza and the withdrawal of the Israeli occupation troops from all parts of the Strip. It condemned the Israeli occupation's takeover of the Palestinian side of the Rafah border crossing and called for opening all the border crossings to allow the humanitarian aid to the Palestinians in the enclave. 
In earlier remarks at the summit, Bahraini King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa stressed the need to polarize the single common Arab stance, which urgently shows solidarity in halting wars and regaining peace. King Hamad also asserted the necessity that the Palestine Liberation Organization remains the legal representative of the Palestinian unity as the summit's host announced his country's total recognition of a Palestinian state and the acceptance of its membership at the United Nations. On the other hand, the Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas said that Hamas gave Israel an excuse to wage war on Gaza with its October 7th attack from the Palestinian territory. As uh, Abbas told an Arab League summit in Bahrain that the military operation carried out by Hamas by a unilateral decision on that day, October the 7th, provided Israel with more pretexts and justifications to attack the Gaza Strip. Arab League Secretary General Ahmed Abu Ghait and the United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres asserted the importance of supporting the role of the UN Palestinian Relief Agency, the UNRWA, as well as the dangerous situation in Sudan and the necessity of working together in order to stop the war there. In a tweet on his social media account, Abu Ghait said that before the 33rd Arab Summit, he received the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, the UN envoy to Sudan, Ramadan Lamamra, and the UNRWA chief, Philippe Lazzarini. They discussed the Israeli aggression on Gaza and its impacts on the Palestinian people, in addition to boosting the role of the UNRWA, especially after all the parties realized the importance of its role and the future of the two-state solution. Israel's Defense Minister Yuav Gallant has said that more troops would enter Rafah as the military operations intensify in the city. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed to launch a full-scale ground operation.